It's sort of like scientific writing that sounds really complex. People will make fun of it because they'll say like, oh, well that scientist, maybe he doesn't know what he's talking about, so he makes it complicated. I used to do graffiti that was really illegible. So you, mine's super readable, that says Max. Can't you read it? And so with graffiti, it's like you have to start simple to show people, hey look, before I make anything complex, I'm gonna show you that I can do simple letters, which is harder than complicated letters. So the first thing that I do before I sketch is look at old school graffiti, especially from New York, that really inspires me. I started with something like this. Pretty simple mags. I wanted there to be some movement going up and down. So I have tons of books. Um, this actually isn't necessarily an artist book, but this is one that I've done several paintings from. It's called The Four Fabulous Faces, and it's from the 40s. I usually go through books and will mark just like stuff I really like, like interactions. I just love, you know, like the focus, and it was just such a classy era. I get reference from these sorts of things, from cool picture books like that. I thought about it and I thought about our wall and I thought, you know what, I, A, I want to get a little more complex, B, I want something that's going to move a little bit more. So the next thing I drew was this. So if you were to just like look at all my letters like this, you can see the M and the A. The thing that makes it look complex is this twirly thing, but that twirly thing is just a trick. After you build a base of simple letters, you can start to make it more complex and get as complex as you want, knowing that there's always that base letter in there. In the first wall we ever painted, we sort of became this artistic partnership. Not only do we get along, but our, our styles complement each other. We have different skill sets. She uses a brush, I use a spray can. 